Good evening and welcome to the Return Homestead. My name is Mike and my wife Marty and I homestead 50 acres in southeastern Kentucky. Today we are out in the chicken yard. We're actually going to take up a little bit of the chicken yard to get something growing here on the homestead we've been looking forward to for a long time. like the whole grandma thank you do you mind so the chickens are going to give us a, a little bit of help here we're trying to get uh, some swales cut into the side of the hill here we want to be able to uh, capture water as it comes downhill and then push it back into the hillside and kind of trap it where we're going to be planting uh, these camellias we want them to be well watered while they're up here uh, this is a pretty heavy clay soil so we are going to mend the soil quite a bit around uh, the camellias once we get them into the ground. Right now we're just kind of marking off some areas where we're going to be planting them. We've got five plants to start with. I got to get one more of these swales cut and then we're going to get some fencing around this to keep the chickens out while the plants have a chance to grow. So these camellias will grow about 10 by 10 so about 10 feet tall and wide. So I'm just kind of keeping them about six feet apart. You may be wondering why would we bother, you know, with a, a shrub? <laughs> why would we take so much trouble with a camellia? The camellias are nature's caffeine machines. Camellias, in every part of their plant, but in particular in the leaves, produce a lot of caffeine. And it can be extracted we call it tea. So as Marty and I have been thinking about how to make ourselves self-sufficient in pretty much every aspect of our culinary lives, we also wanted to make sure we were going to have plenty of caffeine. We enjoy our coffee in the morning and it's just too hard to grow coffee, especially here in Kentucky. Not ideal growing conditions, but Camellias will grow just about anywhere. You can find a variety that will work in your growing zone. They actually produce a lot more caffeine than a coffee does. And unlike the, uh, the coffee, the tea does not require uh, baking it. You don't have to cook the stuff like you do coffee beans. So we're gonna get our little tea plantation going here on the return homestead. We'll just make that switch in our lives. In fact, we already have. So we've cut out the coffee and switched over to tea. Step two would be to produce our own tea. We're gonna start growing the stuff. You got a helper. Yeah, Grandma's been around. Uh, she was here on the property when we bought it. So she's been with us for two years. And she was well at home when we got here. So she thinks she owns the place. Coming down to inspect the digging. <laughs> Do you mind if I continue? Thank you. Thank you. 
just really all I want to do here is just get this angled back into the clay of the hillside. I want to make sure the water can uh, flow back uphill, essentially. I'll trap it there in the clay. Well, it seems like you got a helping crew here. Oh, they're all into it now, huh? Yes. They are redigging your holes. Tell you what, it's the cheapest uh, dirt crew we've ever had on the property. <laughs> they do good work, too. Non-union, by the way. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to have to get some fencing up. Cut these chickens off from the diggings. So we're not trying to put up livestock fencing. We just want to keep the chickens out because they won't leave the fresh dirt alone. So I can't plant those camellias in here and leave the chickens access to them. But even this little bit of fencing needs a fair number of clips to hold it up, even if we don't stretch it super tight. And all the clips I have are used as a homesteader, you may from time to time find yourself straightening nails and um, straightening clips so that they can be reused. Kind of just part of the lifestyle, really. I think they're putting all of the dirt back in the hole. Yeah. Wow. It's like watching sumo wrestling with these guys. <laughs> chickens yeah well those are both orpingtons that we're fighting marsh and buttercup got the holes dug uh, to put these camellias in but this is some pretty nasty clay here so I've gone and dug up a bunch of this old bedding from the goat area 
You know, the goats don't need it anymore. It's a little anaerobic, uh, not ideal to be used as a compost, but it will sit in here on this clay, break apart, decompose, and get some nutrition back into this clay. So these camellias have something to grow in. I'm just gonna break this up as best I can, kind of mix it in with the clay before we plant the camellias. These are relatively small plants for this big swale, which is fine. I'm not going to bury these super deep here. And what kind of plants are those? So these are Camellia sensus, right? Sinesis. Sinesis. So these camellias are going to grow uh, 10 feet tall, 10 feet wide. So we'll take up a good bit of space back here. We'll use these as our primary plants. So we'll be uh, wanting to grow these for cuttings. So we're going to take cuttings off of these plants that will then root out so that we can propagate uh, more tea plants out of what we already have. And that's really kind of the key for a homesteader. You, won't, you don't want to have to go out and purchase new plants every single year. Uh, you guys will notice uh, this year, Marty and I are planting a lot of perennials. We're not doing a large annual garden. Most of what we're planting is designed to be in the ground from now on. So, you know, it's blackberries and uh, fruit trees uh, and tea plants, things that are going to be here for many years after we're long gone. So, Think about that when you're looking to your plantings. Uh, try to get in. Uh, try to get in the plantings that are perennial. They're going to come back every single year, bring you food or sustenance like caffeine every year. Grandma. Grandma. Super. Sure, sure, you think you're just going to walk away from me? Come on. Chicken wrangling. Grandma, come on. Get out of here. <laughs> Yeah. Look at that boy. Wow. So you get green tea, white tea, oolong tea, and black tea all from the same plant. And the way you get different teas from the same plant is in the processing. And just like that, we have camellias in the ground. So we dug out a nice little swale in the hillside for each one of these camellia plants. We've amended the soil and we've dug a small hole and put the plant in. Nothing real complicated here. I know it seems like something as exotic as growing tea ought to have some super secret uh, method for growing it, but it's like every other plant. You put it in the ground, you make sure it has some good soil around it. Make sure it gets some water, protect it from the chickens, and it will grow and produce leaves that we can then turn into tea. So we got all the camellias in the ground. I've got some temporary fencing up. I'm not gonna bother building a gate or you know, putting in level fencing. We're just getting some scraps of fence attached so the chickens can't get through. And yes, this is an ugly mess of fencing, but it'll keep the chickens out and it's only temporary until these uh, camellias can grow into a nice hedge and protect themselves from the chickens. And this is the reason why we chose the area we did. So the sun is getting on towards the early afternoon now and it's over in this direction, over to the west. And all of these camellias are now under shade. So they're gonna be protected from the worst of the afternoon sun. They'll be covered with shade. This is uh, east. So this is where the sun will come up in the morning. 
and it's got to clear all of these large oak trees before we get any sunlight down on the camellia. So this hedgerow is not going to get direct sun for more than a couple of hours throughout any given day. And this is ideal for growing camellias. They don't like direct sun. They do like to be in mostly shade. And this is a good spot for them. We're not crazy about the clay soil up here, but I think we can amend it uh, well enough that we can get the camellias to grow. And that's why we chose this part of the chicken yard. It's up here at the top of the hill. We can keep it isolated from the chickens and from other animals. We've got all of the shade that we need. The only thing we're lacking here is access to water. It's not gonna be easy to water these by hand, but hopefully we won't have to do a lot of that. We do appreciate you joining us here on the Return Homestead today. Hopefully you learned a little something about how to get caffeine on your property. We wanna make sure we have plenty of caffeine. We can't grow the coffee, but we can definitely grow the tea. We've got our first five plants in the ground here behind me and those are ready to grow and start producing leaves. So that's one more item that we can cross off of our list of things we need to buy at the grocery store. Instead, we're gonna provide for it right here on our own property. You saw Marty earlier this week making a hair rinse out of lilacs and sugar of all things. Hey, a simple vinegar rinse is all we really need to have good clean hair. Uh, that's gonna allow us to replace the shampoos we would normally buy at the drugstore or grocery store. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please take a moment to do so. There's going to be a lot of items like that throughout this next year that Marty and I are going to be eliminating from buying at the store. We're gonna figure out some way to provide them right here on the property by our own two hands. If you have that window open and you're subscribing, please take a moment and hit that thumbs up icon as well. That's gonna let the algorithm know you enjoyed the video and they'll share it out with more people. We'll see you next time.